Hey everybody, Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. We are on one of the last, and if I have my cool words, I like the origins. Hey everybody, it's uh, Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. We are on one of the last, and if I have my cool words, I like the origins of uh, penultimate day of 2021. I think that's what I mean, second last, <laughs> or the one before the last. Um, it is the 30th of December, if that makes it easier. And I did say tonight was going to be um, about Paper Pumpkin, but I realize now that when I was looking at my calendar, I was looking at the wrong week. So next week, next Thursday night, we'll talk Paper Pumpkin. Instead, today we're going to talk about something else, and I, I like to have a starting, um, like something on the table to start with, so that when I see the video without a thumbnail, I can I can tell what the video is about. So tonight's video is, what do these all have in common? And it is um, a little abrasive on the eyes, let's, let's put it that way, as I look at the three of these things the way they are. Had had too much to take, but that's also a hint as to what do they all have in common. And what they all have in common is they could all use some vellum in front of them to tone them down. Um, this one's actually not too bad. I love this one just as it is, and if you put something in front of it, but it was a good it was a good sample for what I needed to show you. So yeah, sometimes. Our designer it, papers, <clears throat> very dark, Somebody sometimes very busy, what, what and <laughs> vellum. Today was actually all about and about adhering it. vellum, but then I thought, um, <laughs> if I just say, hey, let's talk about how you put vellum on something, somebody uh, might yeah, be out there going, what, what's it vellum? Like <laughs> this is vellum, also, and vellum is a opaque, um, it's a little bit thicker than the window sheet. Um, and I think it's even, it feels to me like it's thicker than cardstock, although when you look at it, it doesn't seem like it's thicker than cardstock, so it's kind of hard to say. But it's it's cool, and it can do so many things. And the reason this all came to mind actually had to do with this card, which was the one of the cards I made from the challenge. And I say one of because I posted a picture of this card and a tag, but I actually designed two cards. But then the other card, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. So... This is what made me think of it. And when I was looking at the other card, it had like a, or, well, for the challenge, it was actually a sweater that I was looking at. It had a snowy background on it. And I was trying to get the same thing, but not just like stamped. And I was trying to tone it down and, you know, so I thought of vellum and it's embossed, right? So it kind of looks like little snowflakes. But you notice when I put it on, there's like no, nothing holding this vellum on at the top. It's all being held on underneath here. Because vellum, vellum, I should say, is one of those things that is beautiful. That's why when you say beautiful vellum, it's vellum. <laughs> vellum is beautiful and can make, like, add so much to it. But it is a little trickier to, to adhere. So I thought, well, I should, I should tell you how to do that. And I'll show you the third, the second card I made, the third project um, from the last time's challenge. But so vellum gives you a cool background. Um, you can use it for accent pieces. Uh, the wreath I had done the week before, um, the opening of the actual wreath itself, where I wrapped the cord around, was a little too big. I needed to fill it in, but I wanted to fill it in with something that you just barely noticed. Hence the vellum heart. But it is, like I said, <laughs> it is also good if you're just trying to tone something down. I mean, this is beautiful paper, but it's very dark. So if your card front, and you don't have to, like, it's not like you have to cover the entire thing, although you can. Uh, you don't even have to emboss it necessarily. But to put it over top um, and have even a border and then kind of mellow out a piece of it in the middle, still gives you that same impact without white is dark a color. Or in, in some cases, like I say, I mean, the paper's gorgeous, but it's busy. So a piece of vellum over top of it. Keep going out there. Uh, you can still see it. You still get the idea, but it, it feels toned down a bit. So the trick, like I said, to vellum, though, I'll move this out of the way, is it's a little harder to adhere. And this is why. Okay, so this is our beautiful paper from last Valentine's. Shiny, beautiful paper. So... Now, if I was going to put this piece of paper or this vellum on, and you'll realize when we get to 
the actual one I'm showing you today, what started the whole thing. Um, this is fairly flat. So in a lot of cases, you just need to adhere it in a couple places and you're good. In this case, even when I embossed it, there were just, just the way the embossing was, the embossing folder, um, it, it stayed fairly flat. So I could just put uh, stuff behind here. And in, in this case, let's see what I did. I needed to lift this up a little bit so I had room for the ribbon. I'd like it to, to be on um, dimensionals if I put ribbon behind it. So I have basically uh, a dimensional here, here. There's one here. There's one somewhere behind that. One over here and one behind this, I think. So I put six dimensionals on to hold the vellum onto the card, but also to hold it up just enough that this would go through. And because, it, like I said, it's fairly flat, uh, it's not going anywhere. That's that's enough to hold it on, and this will stay down, and away we go. My other card, <laughs> I'm trying not to show it too much, mostly because I didn't finish it yet, because I was going to finish with you. So here's the other card, which I'm hoping will look back to normal when I... You actually hear everything down now, well this piece of vellum more you know, take it off because nothing's done this piece of vellum no is black. gorgeous and with these snowflakes on it but can you see how wonky it is now it's all it's because it just because some were more embossed and then there's lighter pieces and there's and more like the cards, it's no longer like flat and so these trees and are much smaller like this, this works for the sweater because the sweater, this was just a trim on the bottom I mean, I and I liked it on the card, but then I was like, mm, smaller trees. So I use smaller trees, but now that just gave me a whole lot less space to adhere this piece of vellum. And because, I mean, I can put it underneath, like I can put a strip all the way across it underneath the ribbon, but then it's all wrinkly. So I'll show you how to do that one last, but in the meantime, that's the trick though, right? The flatter it is, the easier it is to adhere, but... That said, you still do need to hide okay. <laughs> how you adhere it for the most part. If, if so if you want to put uh, vellum on with the dimensional, you see the problem? <laughs> now it works okay in here. If, you, if I was to put this on this, this in the middle, like I said, you don't have to necessarily cover the whole thing. Let's pretend I just wanted to put a chunk in the middle. And if I was making, honestly, if I was doing it on this very pretty background paper, I would probably use the scallop die cuts or something to give this a nice little fancy edge to it. If I was putting it there and putting a label over top of it, you know, go to town. But it's unusual that I would put the label Otherwise, maybe over in that corner. So chances are the label would be here. So if I'm going to adhere this, if I'm going to use dimensionals, they're going to have to be underneath where that label goes, right? They're going to have to be buried because otherwise you're going to plain as day see those labels. Now, good thing. I don't know if anybody or everybody knew this, but even on cardstock with our dimensionals, if you decide that's not where I wanted that to go, which in this case is definitely not, you can pretty much just roll them. Okay, so let's and you will get all the I want to adhesive and everything off. You, you pretty much trash the dimensional, but um, on occasion you can pick them right up. But so ta-da, it's all gone. Okay, so let's try that again. I want to put this in the middle, and I'm going to put a little bit of die cuts, and then I'm going to put this here. So so I can put some adhesive in the middle. Alrighty then. So we'll go over here with our now seal. What you notice though. And we'll just make an X in the middle, right? Give it a nice, good, strong X. <laughs> X marks the spot. Now, what you notice, though, is you can see the X. So, again, fine if it's going to go underneath. And even with the, the busier paper in the background, you can still see the X. If you're doing it over cardstock, if you want to adhere this down and you feel like you need it's even more obvious where that X of adhesive is. So... Like I said, it's fine if I'm going to do this, but keep that in mind. If you're going to, if you want to adhere this down and you feel like you need to have it nice and secure, don't put a line of seal around the edge of it because you will see a line of seal around the edge of it. But in this case, this works, right? This is the easiest way and probably the most common way that people adhere vellum to a piece of cardstock is they bury it underneath something, right? Now, that's fine if you can bury it underneath something. In the case of our card again, which I have to find little things out, we can't, right? I want to put, I'm, I am going to put this, uh, 
Well, try that again. And I do want to put a snowflake here. And this oh, snowflake trees. Has... I'm going to put this down. And like I said, it is, so it is very bumpy now because of dimensional behind here. I do the embossing. And I do want to put a snowflake put here. And, and this snowflake has and then I a dimensional put... on the back of it. So if I perfectly line up a dimensional behind here, I'd be able to put one. But I still wouldn't be able to put anything in this corner. And then I am going to put... Let me, let me just uh, shift. You can't see it because it's off screen, but my forest is all in my way right now so on top of my piece of ribbon. I could put a strip on the underneath where so this ribbon is going to go. I'm, I'm gonna a go forest go ranger. Let me just move my forest. The there we go. So I could put a strip on the underneath where this ribbon is going to go, and this ribbon is going to go kind of right on that line because the embossing folder was only that wide <laughs> but it also in some cases though you might want to do that because you could heat emboss um, I never mentioned that but you can you can heat emboss on vellum you just have to be careful you don't melt it but you can do it so you could do that you could stamp with stays on so you know maybe there was a reason you wanted it um, flat on the bottom in this case it was just the width of it but I do kind of like the way it looks and I'm going to put this very large um, sentiment on here so I could put a couple pieces behind that, but again, it's not doing anything for my big wrinkly corner over here, which won't lay flat, and which like there's a huge gap here, and I don't I don't want this getting ripped off or pulled off or anything. These these like I said are all very small and they are going to go on here, but it's not going to be easy to get behind them. So in this case, if you can't bury a few little places, you have to make the whole thing the same so nobody can tell it's there. Well, you're That's basically it. All or nothing. So in this case, I'm, sure I'm going to finish this later and post the picture um, of the video. But in this case, I'm going to show you what yeah, you're basically going to have to do. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure where I keep moving all my stuff off screen. Here we go. Um, what you're basically going to have to do is put adhesive on this whole thing. Now, I am not going to take my seal and run strips on here so that it's all the same. No, 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 no. You can do it one of two ways. The silicone mats, genius. So you can use right straight on the silicone mat if you wanted to. But in this case, because I'm using a bigger piece of vellum as well, um, I don't want to have to go wash this off afterwards. I want to just be able to finish this wrong piece. I'm just going to use this little technique. So this is an old embellishment container, and it's been used many times, and it's a little gross looking, but really it's just sticky. It's just glue. And I have an old piece of sponge. Uh, for those of you who know me, I have different scissors for every function. These are the adhesive scissors, so only used to cut sticky things, because I would never do this with my actual good card cutting scissors. But, um, it was getting a little sticky on the end there, so you could just take that off and start. Um, I have seen people do this with one of our finger daubers. Uh, you just have one that is designated as like being the glue one. It doesn't really matter. You basically just need something to stick the glue to. Uh, so yeah, chunk of, and it's not even a very big piece of sponge, really. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our little Tombow or multi-purpose glue. And like I said, you could put it right on the silicone mat if you want, but in this case, you can put it in the... Uh, in the lid of the, of the tray. And you know how when you can't get any to come out and then you keep pushing hard and then all of a sudden you have enough for 10 projects? Yeah, that's what we got now. So a dab or two or half a bottle of glue. And all you have to do is put it in the lid of your case and then make sure you got the right side. This is the one I want up. And then go around and you can just basically put your glue just sort of paint it onto the back. I guess you could, uh, actually now that I say that paint it on, you probably could use one of the aqua painters as well. You could almost thin the glue as you went. But it'd be just like a brush and then as long as you're using water soluble glue, you, uh, you just wash the brush off afterwards before it all dries into a big sticky mess. So basically, don't dry, don't use one that uh, dries super fast. Because if you do, make sure that whatever project you're doing is small enough that you can paint the whole thing. So here's what we're doing. I'm getting rid of the big chunks. Even temporarily, I am just putting the lid on top of it. Not particularly needed. This is getting a little sloppy. Um, 
so that's what I get. Out of the way. And I am just, even temporarily, I am just putting the lid over top of it. Because I know me and I don't want to stick anything I, I value in into the glue. So that's what I did. I painted the back of this piece of vellum. And because I did it with the sponge, I have a bit of it on my finger. Um, and made it nice and smooth. You don't see the lines for it. And the whole back is there. Uh, make sure your card is going the right way up. That's what I was doing there. And then you just want to adhere your vellum before I'm it all dries. I'm going to do this very carefully because I hate two very sticky fingers on this one hand. There we go. Okay. But now, an attempt at getting I'm going it straight. to adhere my vellum to the card. I still have the same cool look that I want. I'm also uh, trying to do this very carefully because I have two very sticky fingers on this one hand. There we go. So now I'm going to adhere my vellum to the card. I still have that same cool look that I want, but now I have enough adhesive behind all these, like basically let's say where a big snowflake was, it puffed my card up. So now I have enough adhesive behind there that it's holding my card flat. I do not have to worry about that piece of vellum coming off. I am uh, just grabbing a wipe to get the glue off my hands. Um, my left hand is good. It's just my right hand that's not. And as you can see, all you see is the vellum. You don't actually see the glue behind it. So, there's your methods. <laughs> hide the hide the glue dots behind it, or hide your, your seal behind it, the way however you design it, or make sure that the whole thing is covered so there's no lines to see. Now I'm going to finish wiping the glue off my hand, finish up this card, and this will be the profile picture. And uh, or, uh, this that I, I don't think profile my picture is right word. Thumbnail picture. Thumbnail's thumbnail the right word. Um, this will be the thumbnail first. picture on this video, so you'll see you what the final and, and final piece looks like. And uh, this would actually be my uh, final live video really for 2021. The different things that um, I started doing stuff in September. And, uh, I'm really getting into this and, and social media, and I have been somewhat mm -hmm. consistent, especially of late. Um, and I have thoroughly uh, enjoyed all the different things I have tried and the different things I have done. And uh, so appreciate all the people who have watched and commented on them. <clears throat> and looking forward to doing many more things, um, given our current spread rate, probably a lot more virtual things than I had originally planned um, in 2022. So I hope to uh, I hope to see you there per in person or digitally uh, next year.